just up this road is probably one of my favorite observation spots for astrophotography. And in today's video, I am not only going to show you exactly where it is, I'm also going to tell you why it's great, and I'm going to tell you how you can find your own perfect observation spots in your local area. So when you're looking for a new observation spot, obviously there is a number of things to consider. Most important, of course, is the light pollution. And for that, there is nothing better than lightpollutionmap.info. I will have this site linked in the description. Now, first of all, you have a number of different maps you can choose from. Up here you will see you have the World Atlas, and you have this um, VIRS, which is the Visual Infrared Surveys. These surveys are essentially just satellites measuring how much light is emitted. So if we take this, we can see how much light is emitted from different points on the ground. Whereas the World Atlas is actually a measure of the sky brightness, so how much light is coming back down. And as you can see, the light emitted, you might think, oh, these areas have completely dark, there's no light pollution at all. But if you actually go to the World Atlas, you can see that there is spill because it spreads out over a large area. I recommend using the World Atlas. I live in Copenhagen, which is right here, and it's very red. And what you want to pay attention to is the bottle scale. Bottle scale is essentially a scale that goes from one to nine, where one is pitch black and nine is as bad as it's ever going to get. Ideally, you want to aim for like a class four, maybe if you can get out to a class three, that's good, or lower, obviously even better, but you can make do in a class four, you can get some pretty decent pictures in class four. So the approach I usually take is I'll pull up a map of my local area like this, and then I will pull up the app.traveltime.com. Great, great resource for these kind of things as well. And I'll plug in Copenhagen. Let's say I want to have a 45 minutes and I pick a 45 minute drive. And there we have it. So now I can see how far can I realistically get. And I can then try to compare these two and I can see what areas would be maybe down the coast, no, we see the light pollution go all the way down the coast. We can't get much part of us killed here, so that's all light polluted as well. So the best area seems to actually be up around here. If we look at just a 45 minute drive, that seems to be the area that I can reach. All around the coast here should be red too. Yeah, it's not that good up the, the coast here. So that's probably going to be my, my first area is going to be looking in in this area here. What I then like to do is I like to pull this map up on uh, on just normal Google Maps and then just take some uh, some satellite images. And from here, we just begin to zoom in and we're going to just begin looking for, for places. Obviously, we have a lot of fields here. Don't go into people's private properties. If you're going to find a place, make sure you are allowed to be there. In many cases, if you have like a farm, in some cases, you might be able to call them up or just go and knock on the door and say, hi, I'm an astrophotographer. You have an awesome spot just down the road on your property. Is it okay if I come by tonight with a telescope and put it up or some other night and put a telescope up, take some pictures, go home? In most cases, people's gonna be fine with it. Um, but do ask permissions before you go. But basically now, all you have to do is just obviously try to avoid cities and then just begin to look around the area um, for places that could be a good spot. And what we're going to be looking for is places, of course, with a good view of the night sky. So if I see a lot of trees like I do here, I would often say mm, that's probably not the best location. If I see a lot of houses in the area, like we did over here, um, then that's probably not too good either, as I can expect the light pollution to be high in here. But another thing that I often also consider is wind, because wind can be an issue where if you have a lot of wind, it can vibrate your telescopes and you get blurry images. So you want to try to, side, try to, try to side, see if you can find shelter. So you want something that's completely open with shelter around it. Awesome, easy to find. <laughs> you get my point. This can be difficult and this is where your main time is going to be. Begin to look around the area, zoom in on areas and see, okay, what kind of road? Just follow a road and see, is there anything here that looked like something that would be... Uh, a public place where you could go with maybe a parking lot or something like that, where you could be allowed to uh, to put up a telescope. I could see, what do we have here? Some kind of, well, that looks like a private thing as well. Places that I like to look is golf courses, because golf courses are often have a parking lot. 
and um, they are often quite open. So this can be a good place to look. We have a golf course right here and we can see there is a parking lot. And then it could be easy just to drop down the little street view guy and take a look. Well, that's a parking lot. There's a tree there. It's not too bad. Overall, it's pretty open. We do have some low hedges. They're a bit too low to give any serious shelter, but there is a little bit. And you could kind of position yourself down here if you get wind from this direction or maybe up here closer to the house if you're allowed to go there. But at least there's a parking lot. That could be a, that could be a candidate. Only problem with it is we have this road. That's another thing I'd really like to try to avoid is to get at least 100 meters or 300 feet to, um, to the nearest road. Just because if you are closer than that, you have the, the, the risk of a car driving by and you get some, uh, some light that shines into your optical tube and ruins some images. There's another parking lot here. Let's go check that one out. Okay, so that looks like it. Oh, it's belonging to a, uh, to a private company. Um, so we probably can't go there, but it looks pretty good. I mean, we, yeah, sure, we have some trees here, but there's a lot of shelter around. I wonder what this is. Well, there's a lot of shelter here around, looks like, on, on at least three of the sides, maybe even four. So that's actually not too bad if we can get around those trees. So that could be a really good candidate as well. And depending on what that is, that could also provide some shelter. So again, it's a private property. You might want to call them up, say, hey, is this good? But there's actually an even better area, an even better spot in this area, which is up here. Now see, this is actually the spot that I showed in the beginning of the video. It's called Piebe Müller. This is a old mill. You can see we have some decent distance to the road here. So we get away from that road. And this is not a very like well-traveled road, especially not at night. We have the, the main road out here. So all traffic going north, south is going to be out here. And then they're going to go in the main road up here. You're not going to see a lot of traffic in here. So that's great. And we can see here we have what looks like some kind of, I'm not sure if it's trees or what it is, but it looks like there's some kind of um, like bushes here that could provide some shelter. We have something here. Maybe there's something there as well. Let's try to drop down the man and take a look. Obviously, we can't go up here. You are welcome on foot. Okay, so that just means you are not allowed to drive in here, but you are welcome on foot. Um, so that that's a good sign. And if we can actually go out here, we can actually see it. Look at that. We can see there is definitely some bushes that looks like a good height, about like a meter and a half, two meters. So they're, just, they're high enough that they provide shelter from the wind. And it looks like everything else around it is pretty flat. Obviously with a big windmill in the way, but we can probably position our telescope in, um, in a good way. So that that's not going to be in the, in the way depending on the target. Other things to consider, like a road like this, if I were to drive down this, I would be concerned um in for instance the winter because is the road properly cleared in the winter those are things that you want to consider as well can you actually get there i mean it depends of course where you live up here in denmark we get snow in the winter and that means you want to make sure you are on a road where it's gonna get cleared so that you're not gonna get yourself stuck because you don't want to be out in the cold in the middle of the night with a car that's suddenly stuck in the snow other things to consider, of course, is what about, what about mobile reception and the whole security aspect of it. Um, often I would like to be close to my equipment and I like to center my car while the, the, the telescope is doing its thing. But obviously I would have to go down to my car here. But since this is a dead end, like nobody's going to come into this area from anywhere other than this road. And if I'm parked at the end of the road here, then nobody, if I, I can see if anybody walks up there and I can... There are one other thing that you want to consider. Now, we found a, a decent spot up here, but if you are getting close into cities, remember that it might actually be beneficial to have at least two good spots. I can tell you I have one out here close to, uh, to Roskilde as well, actually just, just south of it. Um, that's also really good because if I'm up here and I want to shoot a target toward the north, that means I have this area which we saw had relatively low light pollution with only one like city and then we're out over the ocean so ideally if you are when you are shooting you want to shoot in a in it if you're shooting a target to the north you want to make sure that you don't have any large cities to the north i wouldn't probably use this area up here if i was shooting south just because you can get a little bit of light pollution from the city so if i'm shooting south i would often go out to the area as i said just south of Roskilde here because then i'm shooting down over the area here which is a lot less light polluted so those are things to consider as well next step is to scout out the location ideally doing daylight so you can get a layout of the surroundings see what's here and and what's not and 
just to get a feeling for the place so that you know what you're going to be heading into when you come here during the night. We have some shelter here from that shed. We have some bushes here. They're low. They're tall enough that they break the wind, but they're low enough that they don't really obscure the, uh, the horizon very much. And the same thing goes on over here. It is kind of open in the area over here, as you can see. So if wind come here from here, from this direction, I have very little shelter. I can maybe use the windmill for some shelter. But again, that limits the direction I can observe it. But overall, this is a really good spot. As you can see, there's not much around. It's basically like a hill in the middle of a field with good wind coverage. And that's not easy to find. There's very little light pollution in this area. We have one small town over in that direction behind the trees and I don't know, like 15 minutes car ride that way-ish. We have another one slightly larger like it's 10 minutes that way so there's not too much light pollution here that it's uh, that is really noticeable the only real downside of this site is that it's quite a bit of a distance to the car you can you can see it down here all the way down there in the distance you can see it so it's a bit of a walk to get up here every time you need to to check your equipment or or anything like that but again, this is a dead end, so it's not like anybody's gonna come up here from any other direction than that road. Another small feature that's nice about this place is, despite this being well in the middle of nowhere, you can see right out there, hope the phone can pick it up, there. That's a cell tower, so we have pretty good cell reception out here as well. Now, if you're looking to get into astrophotography yourself, I would like to invite you to go to deepspacebooks.com and check out my book, Cosmic Field Guide. It's designed for astrophotographers, regardless of whether you're brand new or an experienced astrophotographer. There's stuff in there that you can use. One of the things, for instance, if you go to a place like this, there's a checklist of all the things you need to do. Remember which order you need to do the different steps, like when do you set up your equipment, when do you connect power, when you balance the scope, all the things is listed up in the correct order. And there's also lists when you are packing down the equipment again to remind you what you need to do um, in order to get all your stuff with you when you go home. Um, so it's just a nice little checklist that takes some of the cognitive load off you and just put it into a book so you have something that's easy for you to just go through a checklist and when you're done with that, then you know you've done everything you're supposed to. Go check it out, deepspacebooks.com. The other type of mount, as I said, is what's called an equatorial mount. These type of mounts is mounted at an angle in such a way that the road... This is a very small, compact solution that has a lot of very neat astrophotography-related features. 